जय राध माधव कुंज भी हरे जय राध माधव कुंज भी हरे Gary, Bhagavad 
Krishna Maha Mantra Ki Jai Om Gyan Timbiranda Sya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Milita Mena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Svapiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvase sa sunyavadi paschatya de satarine Vancha kalpa tarubhischa kripa sindhu pevacha Vatitanam bhavanevyo vaishnavevyo namaho namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai So, as you all know, the topic is enthusiasm, which is a one-word topic. Utsahan, Nishtaya Darya Tatat Karma Pavartana in uh, Bhakti, I'm sorry, Upadesh Amrita, Srila Rupa Goswami explains that there are six characteristics that are required in order to execute devotional service in a favorable way. <laughs> there are ways to execute devotional service, but then there are ways to avoid certain ways to execute devotional service. And so Rupa Goswami takes time to explain six favorable and six unfavorable. In the favorable ones, he says, Utsahan Nishtaya Daryat. Utsahan means enthusiasm. Nishtaya means determination. Daryat means patience. Tattad karma pavartana is the actual process, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Sarubritti and uh, asatsanga. Asatsanga means that association that we should avoid, that is materialistic or association that is contrary to the process of Krishna consciousness. And the last is sarubritti. Sadhu, sadhu and vritti means to follow the process as given by the acharyas. In other words, there is a way to execute devotional service in the activities, and then we combine the activities with the mood. So devotional service is two things. It's a mood of expression and a certain way to perform those that mood in, a, in line with the instructions of the spiritual teachers, the gurus, and of Krishna ultimately. So, Rupa Goswami explains that enthusiasm is the life of bhakti. <laughs> and it's very easy to misunderstand what the word enthusiasm means in, the, in a, an applicable way, in the way you apply it. The Rupa Goswami gives us a definition of what enthusiasm is. And he says, enthusiasm means, and he gives two, two word definition. He says, to endeavor with intelligence. To execute your activities with intelligence. And endeavor means make that effort in an intelligent way. And not just go through the motions or just somehow mechanically follow some kind of process. It means to apply your intelligence in whatever you're doing, whether it's sweeping the floor, cooking, uh, giving a class, um, whatever activities that you find yourself doing in relationship to devotional service. 
we try to acquiesce or bring about that activity in the most beneficial and most intelligent way. And that's devotional service. <laughs> well, that, that's then the, then the mood is to offer that as an offering to the Lord or into his devotees. Without enthusiasm, we're dead, pretty much. <laughs> Without, sometimes we see that devotees uh, become enthusiastic in certain activities and lose that enthusiasm or don't bring about that enthusiasm in other activities. Um, this is seeing devotional service in a material way <laughs> because all activities in devotional service are on the spiritual platform. Although the activities may be different from the material perspective, in anything that done in relationship to Krishna is on the spiritual platform. Therefore, you see, when you hear Srila Prabhupada explaining, he says that um, whether one is washing the floor in the, the temple or another one is out distributing books, the activities are the same. Why? Because they are both in relationship to Krishna as an opportunity to please the Supreme Lord through that activity. So the absolute principle of all the devotional activities is the foundation. But sometimes we see, um, well, I like this and I don't like this, or I do this, although I'm not so enthusiastic about it because it's required. That will cause you to somehow or other lose your flow in devotional service. In other words, you break your consciousness up with this um, evaluating activities on them as a material perspective. In other words, this is nice and this is not so nice. Or this is pleasing to me and this is not pleasing to me. Now, you can take this into another level. We have certain propensities. We might say each and every devotee has certain talents, abilities, and conditioning that's due to our association growing up in the material world. So we have certain abilities and talents that are more natural when we use them in devotional service, and other things are not so natural, or more have to be learned, or we, they have the, they're more or less something that seems to be a little bit more difficult to execute. But um, and that's that is uh, we can say that is acceptable. But then again, if you want to rise to the transcendental platform, you have to somehow or other apply this principle of enthusiasm to all of the activities you perform, like that, because Krishna is the reciprocant of the activity. We're offering it to Krishna. The mode of passion when applied to devotional service means that I'm looking for a particular result in the activities that is beneficial for me. In other words, I perform the activities but it's about me. And I'm looking for a particular activity a particular result, and if the result is favorable according to my ideas and understanding, then that's good for me. But if it's not, then I feel something different. I become I lose a little bit of my enthusiasm to perform activities. But then again, devotional service is not about us. <laughs> it's about Krishna. <laughs> We're the beneficiary. We get the benefit, but Krishna is the one that gets the offering. <laughs> We're benefited because we get the opportunity to serve the Lord. Devotional service is a privilege. It's open to everyone, but it's, it's a privilege because very few people take it. <laughs> That's why it's called privileged, because there are, although it's available for each and every living entity, and it's the nature, it's the intrinsic nature of each and every living entity to love and serve the Supreme Lord. Very few actually take it up, take it up 
and very few take it up with enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is a driving force that keeps you um, it's fixed in devotional service. Sometimes because of no results or different results, there's a, there is a diminishing or a redu reduction in our enthusiasm. Like we go out on book distribution and we're out there all day and we sold one book. <laughs> of course, that one person got benefit. And we think, oh, it's not my propensity. <laughs> but Krishna's not seeing it that way. He's seeing how much you are enthusiastic to perform the activity and the results are up to him. Now, if you get successful in the execution of your activities, in other words, if things apparently are going nicely and then you become proud of that, and you think, oh, I got it now. And then Krishna says, watch out, what's coming up? <laughs> You don't have it anymore. <laughs> because he then he changes the results a little bit and then you start to see things in a different line. And why does he do that? Because he wants to keep your enthusiasm going in the right direction and not in the wrong direction. <laughs> Although the enthusiasm may not be checked, it might be a little bit in the wrong direction. <laughs> it's about me. It's about me getting a good position in Krishna consciousness. It's about me hearing all the devotees say, Jai. <laughs> uh, it's about, in other words, it's something about me that is uh, the motivation behind the activity. Although, and you know, when you, sometimes I've seen devotees, when they actually learn it's not about them, they lose their enthusiasm. <laughs> Oh no, it's not about me. Well, maybe I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah. So that's not Krishna consciousness, actually. Because you, the satisfaction you receive in devotional service is, the, is how much you put into it. That means your attention and your enthusiasm to do it in the best possible way as an offering to Krishna as an offering to the devotees of Krishna, both. We don't separate these two groups. It's not only about Krishna, it's about Krishna's devotees, because as we serve, we're also serving the devotees in relationship to our service to Krishna. And sometimes we're serving the devotees directly, and Krishna is not even in the picture, it's more about the Krishna and more about the devotees. So, the enthusiasm always is in relationship to how much you use your intelligence to serve. And the way you can keep enthusiastic is when you see that all activities are important. Whatever it is, whatever small activity it is, even if you have to clean the toilet, it's Krishna's toilet or it's the toilet that needs to be cleaned for the brahmachari ashram. And if you do that and you're enthusiastic and it comes out really nice and everybody says, wow, it's not a, it's a pretty good bathroom to be in, you know, then that's devotional service. But then again, sometimes we think, well, when we first join Krishna consciousness, we think, yeah, I can't wait till I'm a more advanced so I can go out and be a preacher and go out and, you know, distribute books and be in the competition for the best book distributor. You know, right now they're just asking me to clean the floor in the temple and then I have to somehow or other cut vegetables and, you know, I'm not so good at that, but I, all right. Well, I have to grow up in Krishna consciousness. Is there any fast way I can speed through this process so I can get to the top? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> because you'll see that who, who are the blissful devotees? That's not so much by their service, it's by the attitude of their service. That's the ones that are blissful. The ones who have that attitude, the right attitude, or the enthusiastic attitude in the service, 
They're the ones that are happy. And not so much about those who are getting big results apparently like that. And I've seen it in our Krishna conscious movement where there's devotees who have done so many powerful things, opened up temples and started yatras and traveled around the road, wrote books. And now they're no longer in Krishna consciousness. Somehow or other, they're not here anymore. Why? Somehow it was about them. It wasn't about Krishna. It was about doing big things for, in order to get... So that, that's, that's the wrong mood of the enthusiasm. When we see Krishna's pleased, and how do you know when Krishna's pleased? This is a question that comes came to Prabhupada many times. How do you know by what I do whether Krishna's pleased? And Prabhupada gave a very simple and very logical response. He said, well, we are part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, we're always connected to Krishna. So when you please Krishna in devotional service, you're pleased. <laughs> you also feel that pleasure that Krishna is reciprocating by saying, very nice, thank you. <laughs> you're pleased. So if you're not pleased in your Krishna consciousness, you should think, maybe there's some adjustment in the way I perform my activities. <laughs> because it, I've seen devotees who have supposedly the most glorious forms of service, like book distribution or giving classes or you know, getting even gurus, and after a while, they lose their enthusiasm. So it's the mood. And then there's pot washers who never want to change their service. They love it. <laughs> Just let me scrub Krishna's pots and make it so clean that it'll become, I can see my face in the bottom of the pot. <laughs> So this enthusiasm, now how do you how do you get enthusiasm? Well that's another point. This is I guess this is the main part of the lecture. How do you get enthusiasm? Well it's quite simple. There's just a few ways, but one of the ways is look for people who are enthusiastic. <laughs> Watch them and at the same time look for opportunities to associate with them. And you'll see there's something about them that is just, it kind of rubs off on you. So that's one of the ways, is probably the most direct way, is to see when you see someone who is enthusiastic. Just like sometimes you go to a meeting, you know, and you're with devotees and you have to discuss some kind of subjects. And maybe just some administration subjects or organizational subjects. And you see someone who's really enthusiastic and he's got a lot of ideas, he planned the whole thing. And he sparks the whole meeting and everybody gets into it. <laughs> and then everybody starts to follow and then the enthusiasm starts to flow like that. Another way to be enthusiastic is just act like it. Yeah, it works. <laughs> there was one very enthusiastic senior devotee in our movement. His name was Vishnu John Maharaj. Probably you heard of him. One of the more famous kirtan leaders in our movement. He used to do kirtan for an average 10 hours a day on the streets with Harinam. In those days, devotees went out in the morning and they came back at night all day on Harinam in some places, most places. So, and anything he did, he did it with enthusiasm. Whether it was giving a class, or doing kirtan, talking to devotees, yeah, or even taking prashadam, he would say, oh wow, this is the best prashadam I ever had. And then next, next time he would take prashadam again, he would say that same thing. Yeah, and then so devotees were wondering, how, how is he, how's he doing it? And then they asked him, and he said, well, I'm not always enthusiastic, but I act like it. <laughs> yeah. 
And when you act like it, because Krishna consciousness has that certain element that when you act like you're supposed to be, you become like that. And it's not artificial. When you act in the material way, it's an act. <laughs> but in spiritual life, enthusiasm is the foundation for the execution of devotional service. So when you act enthusiastic, you become enthusiastic. Really. So you might say, oh, oh boy. It's one, it's one of those dry days. Just forget about it. Just, just act enthusiastically. That's all. And that means develop that mood. That Krishna consciousness is so nice. I get a chance to serve. Wow, let me, let me just serve in the best possible way. And not only that, let me think of how ways to make that service even better. And I'll tell you another way to you can become enthusiastic. And Prabhupada just said this today. I was listening to him today. Prabhupada said, you want to become enthusiastic, go preach. <laughs> go out and preach, and then you'll become enthusiastic, he said. Yeah. So that preaching element is a way to ac acquiesce or I mean, immediately spun, start becoming enthusiastic. Because if you're not enthusiastic when you preach, <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> Uh, you want a book? No? Okay. Maris, all right. Nice meeting you. Okay. You should have stayed home today. Yeah. <laughs> so that's not going to work. So, yeah, enthusiasm is the life of bhakti. Now, some people try to fake it too much. <laughs> there's, there's an overdose of that. And you can, it's more like, you know, like a drug. And you can you can zonk out because of that, um, but it should be done in relationship to the service you had. And if it's done then in that way, then it'll always be an instrument for you feeling more and more enthusiastic. And those who are enthusiastic in Krishna consciousness, they're noticeable. You see them; they they stand out. <laughs> Um, and it's not so much external expressions of, you know, like animations. It's not about that. It's an internal mood that manifests itself act outside in the form of the service we perform. <laughs> like that. But, but if you want to be enthusiastic in one particular service, take prasadam. <laughs> Because everyone's enthusiastic for that, right? And then start from there. <laughs> and then you can give it into the other areas. <laughs> and it mentions that in the Shastras, it mentions that in taking prasadam is one of the ways by which you become enthusiastic in Krishna consciousness. That's in, that's in nectar devotion. Yeah, simply by taking prasadam, you develop enthusiasm for devotional service like that. So every time you're not enthusiastic, take prasadam. <laughs> now that could be a problem for some of us. <laughs> we might be might be might be in the in the dining hall all day. <laughs> but that won't work. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> Hopefully that, that one time is enough to keep you enthusiastic for a while. <laughs> but enthusiasm is the life of bhakti. I was with one book distributor, and he told me, he was not only a book distributor, he was also a fundraiser, he would do fundraising separately. He said, uh, I don't know how to explain this in such a way that it doesn't come out in the wrong way. Hmm. This is a tough one. <laughs> he said he was he was so enthusiastic. I mean, he, he he would see people from a distance and say, "Hey, hey, you stop!" And then he would run over them, come over and shake their hands, and introduce himself, and ask them their name, where they're from, how they're doing, where they're going. 
And then after a while, he'd sell them a book. You know, he was so enthusiastic. He would run after people. <laughs> Sometimes they would run away, but... But his enthusiasm was natural. And he told me, he said, you can take a piece of hmm, stool, that's the word he used, put it on a piece of cardboard, and if you're enthusiastic, you can sell it. <laughs> now, he could do it. <laughs> yeah, this is what he, what he was trying to say, he wouldn't do that, of course, that was not... No, that, that was completely taboo. He wouldn't do that. But what he is saying, when you have that enthusiasm, you can sell anything to anybody. <laughs> no. In other words, you can get people to get donations. You can get people to, you know. I remember, I, I, I did book distribution very little in my life, but one time I was, I was enthusiastic I think I remember one time I was in Tuesday, and I saw someone, and I just started coming over them, towards them real fast, and the person went, and they got at their wallet, and they gave me, they gave me the money before I even got there. <laughs> really. And it, it happened a couple times, actually. So I really understood what Krishna consciousness is about. <laughs> it's really about enthusiasm. <laughs> And so, and, and when, when that is coupled in the right, in the activity of devotional service, it has tremendous amounts of, what we say, it spreads Krishna consciousness very fast. But we should not consider enthusiasm to be limited to a particular sower. Always be enthusiastic for everything. And that way we'll always be on the spiritual platform, even with a, a seemingly ordinary things like that. So these are some elements of enthusiasm. There was one devotee, he really wanted to give a class, but he didn't know anything about the philosophy. <laughs> and so he, he decided to give a class. So what he did, it was kind of like the cold weather time, so he, put, he wore a hat during the class, and you couldn't see it. He had a tape recorder inside, and he had the wires coming up to his ears with the hat over it, and he had the button here. And so he was, it was Prabhupada's class, so he would push the button, and then when Prabhupada would say something, and he'd hear it, and then he would re repeat it. And then, and then he pushed the button again and get the next phrase. He repeated the whole class. Everybody said, wow, that was a good class. <laughs> Later on they found out <laughs> he simply was pushing buttons. <laughs> but, you know, everybody was enlivened. <laughs> so that's, you might say that's using your intelligence. <laughs> How to, how to become enthusiastic like that. But that's another feature of enthusiasm, is to hear from those who are enthusiastic. When you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures, you see how enthusiastic he is to put the philosophy across. He's, a, he's like in an, like an emergency level. Like, you gotta have this knowledge. It's like, it's like a person who is dying and the doctor is trying to administer some medicine to save the person. That's how Prabhupada preaches. He's preaching in that mood of like, this is, this is it. So when we, and we have that enthusiasm, it may, be, it may be internal and we apply it to our devotional service. It comes out with the intelligence on how to do your service in the best possible way. Like that. And it doesn't matter what service it is. And that's the life of bhakti. And again, and I'll repeat this point again because it's very important. Associate with those who are enthusiastic. That's very, very important. Because it'll rub off and you'll find your enthusiasm will increase automatically. Now there is the persons who are enthusiastic, because we mentioned this, and when they don't get the results that they're looking for, the enthusiasm is diminished. 
That's the test. There's the test. When you're, you, you try your best, and you're enthusiastic in all ways, and, but a particular result is not favorable according to your own estimation. Then you think, hmm. But failure, apparent failure, we must use the word apparent failure, is actually a way to increase the quality of your devotion. Really. Because you get to look at how you executed the devotional service and you think, maybe I should approach it from a different angle, or maybe I should have added this, or you look at it in a, in a analytical way and you see how to improve it. Uh, from the material perspective, we have people in the material world who are, were considered to be great scientists and discoverers, and they always persevered amongst failures. <laughs> there was one, you've heard of uh, Singer, Mr. Singer, who invented, invented the sewing machine, called Singer Sewing Machine, you've heard of that? He tried so hard to make that machine, and he couldn't get it. He couldn't figure out where to put the hole in the needle. <laughs> and he was figure, trying to work on it. And then one night, because of his strong desire, he went to sleep and he had a dream. And in the dream, he got the answer. <laughs> put the hole in the head of the needle. <laughs> and he did. And then later on, he was successful. He failed so many times. There are so many great people materially who have failed but somehow became successful because they could persevered. So we might say perseverance is, in order for perseverance to be there, enthusiasm has to be there also. Srila Prabhupada failed apparently when he came to the United States. Very little results, when, even after a few months in the United States. It wasn't until about almost eight months later that he actually started to get any results from his preaching. Before that, he was finding it even difficult to find a place to live, what to speak about, and, and no money. Of course, coming over on the boat with two heart attacks and so many difficulties and even getting a ticket on the boat. So many times Prabhupada failed, but he never lost his enthusiasm. Never lost his enthusiasm. So one of the ways to keep your enthusiasm up is to have a goal. To have a goal, huh? Detachment? Passion. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Passion in the right way. <laughs> Yeah, that passionate attitude like that. Uh, in the right way, connected with Krishna consciousness, and will somehow rather give you more and more ideas on how to uh, become successful in the execution of your devotional service. So never lose your enthusiasm. And if you don't have one, some get it. <laughs> Wherever they're selling it, buy it. Even if it's a high price, pay for it. <laughs> it's worth it. Because that's the life of bhakti, enthusiasm. Yeah. Okay, so yes. Purity is the quality that brings bhakti to perfection. Yeah. And uh, wisdom is, yeah, it's the, yeah the, no, the transcendental knowledge is called the fruit of transcendental wisdom. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's also that's actually mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. Mm -hmm. Purity is the nature of the soul's existence. But when purity is, is achieved, then one has reached perfection. Purity means no more material desires. Purity means only, my, only the desire to serve Krishna, to please Krishna by my service. That's purity. 
Now there's a, such a thing called pure desire without having pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. You can have a pure desire and at the same time not be purified in, in, in consciousness. And that leads to purified consciousness. And Prabhupada talks about two kinds of pure devotees, those who are pure and those who have pure desire. So if you have a pure desire that whatever it takes to become a pure devotee, I'm willing to accept. Just like there's that one beautiful statement by Lord Ramachandra, anyone who comes to me and says, uh, you know, I'm surrendering to you from this day forth through my entire life. He says, I take that person back to the spiritual world. <laughs> yeah. So, pure desire. You, you can all, we can all do that. I want, I will become Krishna conscious. This is called aphorism. An aphorism is a statement in the present that reflects the, the uh, results in the future. I will become a pure devotee. You can make that statement. And then you think, uh, and then, now, then you have to get there. <laughs> but when you make that statement, you're already on your way. <laughs> you're on your way. But if you think, well, you know, becoming a pure devotee is not possible for me, that's for the, the other guy, then you won't do it. <laughs> And you won't make it either. <laughs> you already defeat yourself. <laughs> but if you say, yes, I will become a pure devotee, I will develop my love for Krishna, then you're on your way. <laughs> Krishna consciousness is the affirmation of everything positive, nothing negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Any Comments, questions, Sri Devi. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Inspiratiat. Inspiratia. Uh, I'm I'm a little slow in language. Inspiratia. Close. Okay. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'll get it. Yes, question. So I have a question. Um, what to do if you lose your enthusiasm and how to not lose it? Well, I guess the second question should be the first question. Uh, what happens when you lose it? Um, how not to lose it? How not to lose it is... Um, association with devotees who are enthusiastic. And how to keep it is also an association with devotees who are enthusiastic. <laughs> That's almost the same answer for both questions, but in essence, um, when you know the philosophy, that's a principle of enthusiasm. The more we know how this process works and the philosophy connected to the practice, and the philosophy connected to our relationship with Krishna, the more we can become enthusiastic because it's all connected. Uh, when we know how wonderful Krishna is and how, how he relates to his devotees and how kind he is to his devotees and how, and how merciful he is to his devotees, that, that, that helps us to keep our enthusiasm. So Bhakti Vinoda Kaur makes that point. He says, knowledge is also a principle of, of keeping enthusiasm, and gaining and keeping enthusiasm, transcendental knowledge. But just hang around with devotees who are enthusiastic. <laughs> but you look like you're enthusiastic. So. <laughs> Good. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Um, it becomes clear actually why they say uh, sometimes that enthusiasm is contagious. After this uh, class, um, as enthusiastic as it can get is always. So thank you so much. Um, now, the 
question. Um, if understood correctly, you said that failure is sort of prerequisite for success. Uh, uh, failure. Failure is, is a, a prelude to, to success, as long as you don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in that uh, respect, uh, looking at the world out there uh, seems like we are failing big time. So, do you think we are now close to some sort of turnaround point? Uh, well, leveling up the yeah. consciousness generally, and I mean, everybody locally. knows that. The more outside pressure, the more the devotees come together. The more difficult the times are, the more opportunities and the reasons for devotees to work closer together with each other. Because then we need each other more in those times. That's also there. It has a tendency to bring the devotees together. So that's, been a, that's good. <laughs> That's beneficial. And we can speak about how, since the last two years, how book distribution has climbed higher and higher all around the world since, since these last two years. So, yeah, uh, different difficult material times are great opportunities for devotees to see the need to be more in association with and work closer with each and every one of us. And we also start to evaluate, we also put more value on that association. Sometimes we take it for granted that association is available. But when you lose it, I mean, like sometimes, you know, we have been asked to, you know, lock down and people are by themselves. Oh, then that feeling of like, yes, I want to associate with devotees again. I'm feeling that loss. And then that association brings greater appreciation for the devotees also. When that appreciation increases, then Krishna consciousness increases also. <laughs> yes, yeah, so hard material times are actually good for Krishna consciousness. <laughs> As long as we don't go the way of the world, as long as we keep our focus on Krishna and devotional service. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Uh, it does. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Hare Krishna. Thank you. <laughs> Sri Devi. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this wonderful lecture. My question is, how do we uh, keep up uh, the same level of enthusiasm for all different kinds of services? I know you touched a little bit in the lecture. Well, you know it's for Krishna. <laughs> Everything is done as an offering to Krishna. So when you think in that way, then you can remain enthusiastic. Mm. Krishna is more interested in the mood of your devotion than the service. The service he doesn't need, but he accepts the service in relationship to the mood, just like he says, patram pushram palam tayam yome bhakta panachiti. So he's saying, it's not so much what you give me, it's the mood by which you give it to me. And, mm. <laughs> yeah. And how so, can we access the same mood of enthusiasm? Because some services we like very much, and we're very enthusiastic. And some other services like, ah, oh, no, I don't like to do this, and I don't like to do that, like that. Well, we should be a little bit better than that. <laughs> <laughs> we should think, well, maybe it's not my nature to do this service, but I'll do it. Hmm. Or, I, or I, sh I have to do it because it's part of... You know, the it's required to be get to get to get done, and I've been asked to do it, or I have to do it. But I don't like that's that's really Maya. Mm. <laughs> mm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Mm. Appreciate it. Yeah, I, you know, I remember one time I was out 
um, it wasn't book distribution. I was doing fundraising, and I would, I would go out fundraising by myself a lot of times. We better be, and I did. We I drive into a parking lot, and then I'd have to get out and try to collect money from people. And uh, sometime one time it was cold, really cold, and I'm sitting in my car and I'm thinking, you know, the the weather is cold and the people are colder than the weather, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to get out. And then, but I'm in my mind, I was thinking, this is my service, I've come, I have to get out. But then there was that other feeling. And then uh, it was like going back and forth. Finally, Krishna gave me the answer. He said, do it for me. And so as soon as that came into my mind, then it was easy. All right, do it for me. If I wasn't doing it for myself. <laughs> If I did, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> so that's how the devotional service works. When you think about do it for do it for the Lord, do it for the pleasure of the devotees. Hare Krishna. That was actually also part of my question. When you are full of enthusiasm, and you are outside of with non devotees. And you can feel how you share your enthusiasm and how um, this enthusiasm going somewhere. Where is the, how to say, border when you, you think, when you see, okay, it's enough, I, I need to stop to share all this, you know what Well, I, mean? I, I think that's, that you have to understand by your own experience. Yeah, it's for Krishna. I, I, feel like I don't think you can really or... say, well, there is a, a drawing, a line you draw at a certain point. You're in that environment, and you're enthusiastic, and you're seeing what is, what is happening. So sometimes you have to think, well, maybe, and maybe the mood should change a little. That's, that you have to understand through your own experience. No one can tell you, well, it's like this, it's like that. And of course, if you're dealing with people, people are individuals. And every individual may be re more receptive or less receptive. So you have to see that individual you're with. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. So, oh, is it? oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for this class. Um, it's not really a question, but I, I can't stop thinking that there's a very fine line between keeping one's enthusiasm by faking till you make it. Yeah. That works. Uh, at the same time, I think it's very important to be honest with oneself, and even though I'm faking it, like realizing that I'm faking it, and um, no. understanding that I have to work on the enthusiasm to become genuine at some point. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you I said, it's not really a question, but I think that... Uh, you can't go on in that way. You can fake it until you make it a couple of times, but it's not a regular thing. You have to come to the platform of actually getting genuine enthusiasm. So the experience you may have that, w that comes by acting in that way and then experiencing that, you take that experience, the results, and then you try to work with that and keep that mood with you. Mm -hmm. that help? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we can uh, conclude here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai.